All right, so boom. Popular songs I've never heard part two. I had to make a sequel to this video because recently I came across another song that I've never heard of, but I talked about it in one of my recent live streams and I posted it on my Instagram and I had people like, what, you ain't heard this song before? This song came out in 2016 and I had the young dudes talking about some, man, I used to bump this song a lot when I was in middle school. Apparently this was a hit amongst the young niggas. Do any of y'all remember this song? Bro, the young dudes was like, ain't no way you've never heard this. I'm like, y'all gotta chill. <laughs> I was told this song was big in the NBA 2K YouTube community. That's something another person told me. But yeah, after I found this song a couple of months ago, I had to make a sequel to this list. Check out part one that will be linked in the description and pan comment. Let's go, y'all. We're starting this video off with the one and only Robin Fenty. I didn't know about the existence of this song until 2023 when I was on Twitter and a gang of people was talking about how random of a collab this track was. So four, five seconds features Kanye West and Paul McCartney from the Beatles. And I was seeing tweets about this collab makes no damn sense. Whose idea was this to even put this song together? Man, I remember hearing this song a lot back then. This song was so stupid to me. I was seeing those tweets and thinking, I remember hearing this song a lot back then. This is my first time hearing it. <laughs> so I wasn't hip to the backlash that this song was allegedly getting. But this song is great to me. This is one of the very rare times that I was bummed that I haven't heard about a song sooner than I did. Four or five seconds was supposed to be on Rihanna's latest album from 2016, Anti. It ended up not making it on there and now it's just considered a non-album single. And hey, she. This is one of the best nine album singles I've ever came across. The song made it to number four on the Billboard Hot 100. It's five times platinum. The music video has over half a billion views on YouTube. So I was seeing all this and going, wow. So this really was a random ass collab that was well known back then. It deserves to be this popular because Rihanna was singing on this track. Do y'all not hear this? I hope you can understand. I think when it comes to Rihanna, people be gatekeeping some of her best songs anyway, man. Y'all don't be wanting to put people hip to the real heat she has. I recently did a live stream where I played Rihanna's latest four albums, and I was saying how I found it crazy that this woman dropped her second worst album right before she went on hiatus. But during that stream, I asked people what they think were the best songs from these four albums, and the songs people were naming was all the mid shit. People was telling me Man Down was fire, Cap. People were telling me We Found Love with Calvin Harris was fire. That's even more cap than saying Man Down is fire. So during that stream, I came across some other cold ass tracks I've never heard of. From Talk That Talk, there was this nice ass song called Watch and Learn. And then from her second worst album, there was this song with a beautiful guitar riff on there. This song was heat too. I can honestly count this next song as a dual entry with four or five seconds because I've never heard of this either. But it was this one song called Kiss It Better. So I ended up telling my chat, man, y'all some gatekeeping, holding out ass niggas. Why didn't y'all tell me about these when I asked y'all what her best songs were? Everybody had the same excuse. Oh, nigga, we thought you knew about this song. Shoot, we thought you knew. Man, y'all be holding out. But like I said, I'm glad I found four or five seconds. If this song would have been included on Anti, it would have been the best song on that album. Nah, that's BS. Four or five seconds will never be better than the real best song on the album, James Joint. Future is another person who I've never deeply listened to his music. So with him having nine albums and 17 mixtapes, y'all can bet y'all lean sipping asses I haven't listened to much of his music either. Hell, speaking of Future and speaking of Rihanna since I just talked about her, I just found out a couple of weeks ago that Love Song with Rihanna is not his song. He's the feature while Rihanna is the main artist. I always thought it was the other way around. I don't wanna give you the wrong impression. I did not know he was only a feature. Oh, 
when it comes to future tracks where I wasn't aware of his involvement, I could actually go on all day when it comes to him, but I'm gonna give y'all one more example. Apparently, Future has a collab song from his early career days with the best member from Destiny Child, Kelly Rowland, called Never End. I can't get over you and the things that you do. I haven't listened to this Pluto album that this was from, nor have I listened to any Future album. I got better things to do with my time. So since I haven't listened to Pluto, you will be correct if you assumed I haven't listened to Hendrix, which is the album that this song Pi comes from. It wasn't actually on the album initially. The song was released as the second single for the project, but when the project actually dropped, Future didn't put it on there. But he ended up updating the Hendrix album and he added two more songs to the end of the track list, those two songs being this one, and You The Baddest with Nicki Minaj. Unlike the previous entry, I'm not bummed at all that I didn't know about this track beforehand. The song ain't nothing to ride home about. It's just a simple track about tricking on one of your side hoes. You got a main chick at home, but this other girl you talking to is so fine, you just want to spoil her. But the side chick you talking to ain't shit either. Because after you done bossed her life up, she's out there lying on your name. But you don't care that she lying because she got that ass. Chris Brown singing is good, but when is that not the case? Future though? Uh, nah. She can never be lying. But she's so fine. This song has 93 million streams on the spot and 71 million views on YouTube, and I have never heard of it. Not every song in this video is going to be something that's massively popular, by the way. Pi didn't even chart on the Hot 100, and it was certified gold, but not until five whole years after it came out. So it's not like this was some smash hit. If anything, some people may define this as a flop. Two super popular artists by Chris Brown and Future for y'all to <laughs> for y'all to release a single and then not even chart on the Hot 100. That's that's low key a disappointment. I haven't heard anyone on the planet ever talk about this song, and because I'm not a massive listener of Chris or Future, I had no idea this collab existed. I saw a comment on the YouTube video that was superb levels of nonsense. Someone said this should be at 500 million views. Someone responded to their comment three and a half years later talking about, nah, this one of them songs that's fire, but you gotta keep it on the down low. And the original poster responded and was like, correct. It, no, man, y'all need to stop calling everything y'all like underrated and say that it deserves more love. This song doesn't have 500 million views because it's not that damn good of a song. Some records like Pi are just I right, like they're cool. If this had 500 mil views, that would make it massively overrated. Now, before talking about this song, in the part one video, I had an important question in there. I asked my viewers, what is a song that if someone told you they've never heard the song in their life, you wouldn't even believe them? Whether you sang the song yourself or you just pulled up your phone and played the phone, they just sat there like, nope, doesn't ring a bell. You would be like, hell no, nah, you're lying. There is no way you don't know what this is. Now, my own answer to that question, I didn't say it in that video, so I'll say it now. This is a song that was hot in the mid 2000s. I feel most people, as soon as the song starts, you'll instantly recognize it. If you lived in the United States in the mid 2000s, I will never believe you if you told me you've never heard this song. Yes, Holla Back Girl by Gwen Stefani would be my answer. Especially if you were old enough, like a teenager, young adult, or older. If someone said to me, I was in college during the mid 2000s and I've never heard of no Holla Back Girl, I don't know what this is. I would be in instant denial. You're telling me you was 19, 20, 21 years old in 05, 06, 07 and you don't know what this is? Okay, nigga, sure. The reason I bring all of this up is because hella people answered my question in the comments of the last video and one person specifically said, if someone told me they've never heard the Waka Waka song from Shakira, I wouldn't believe them. Well, nigga, guess what? I say, well, nigga, guess what? I would be that somebody. <laughs> I don't know a damn thing about Shakira outside of Beautiful Liar and Hips Don't Lie. And I don't even like Beautiful Liar. So when I read this comment, I went to look up this Waka Waka song, saw that it had 4 billion views, and I realized I was not part of this 4 billion people. This song came out in May 2010. I made this video in March of this year. And me pulling the song up after reading that comment was my very first time hearing the song. Man, sue me. <laughs> I've never heard one second of this song until March 2024. 
Waka Waka was released as the second single of the 2010 FIFA World Cup album, but it was declared the official song of the 2010 FIFA World Cup in general. This is what I'm talking about. I didn't even know the FIFA World Cup had albums. I don't watch soccer, football. Soccer is a sport that has never interested me. <laughs> I've never lost sleep because I don't watch soccer. I've never been denied employment because I don't watch soccer. <laughs> I've never had a girl tell me that she didn't want to talk to me anymore because I wasn't a fan of soccer. So anytime the World Cup rolls around, y'all know what I'm not doing? Watching the World Cup. But because of the popularity of the World Cup, that is the reason why this song is as popular as it is. As much love as the song received, it did receive a lot of criticism as well off of the fact that Shakira is the one singing the song. For context, this song is a love letter for South Africans or just Africans in general. The lyrics mention the upsides of African culture, how Africans need to come together to celebrate their culture, how strong Africans are, how they can persevere through anything, and other positive things about the people from there. The end of every chorus is her singing, the issue with this is, Shakira is not from Africa herself. She's from South America, specifically Colombia. So a good amount of African folks had an issue with that. Why would you make a song dedicated to the pride and determination of African people and then have someone that's not African singing the song? From that standpoint, I do understand the slander that this song received. But either way, it don't matter how good the song sounds or how treatable Shakira is, y'all not getting me to watch no football. Now for those of you that watched my recent video on rap songs that got stopped from going number one on Billboard Part 2, I mentioned this song in that video because this song has stopped Jay-Z's Run This Town from getting the number one spot back in October 2009. And in that video, I said something about this song that I'll repeat here. Nowadays, when I see this Jay Sean track, I be feeling some type of way because one time I was with this girl and she was singing this song at the top of her lungs. You would have thought this was her favorite song of all time. And when I asked her, what is this? What are you listening to? She was so taken aback that I haven't heard it. <laughs> and she was all like, what you mean? What am I listening to? This was a hit. That conversation with that girl happened in 2022, by the way. This song was released in 2009. So yeah, this was a whole 13 years where I didn't know what this was. I think I've heard the name Jay Sean before that point, but I wasn't fully educated on who he was, nor did I care, <laughs> the fuck? I ain't never went to work or ever went to school or been outside in public and heard someone talk about a human being named Jay Sean. But I have since learned who he is. So Jay Sean is actually a British singer, born and raised in London. From 2004 to 2008, he released two albums and had six singles. The thing is with these albums and singles is that none of them were released for a US radio market. It was just for the UK because he hadn't made that crossover yet. And with that being said, in 2008, Jay Sean signed with Cash Money because he wanted to finally tap into the American markets. His very first single released for US radio was the song Down. And of course, since he signed the Cash Money, it made perfect sense to put Lil Wayne on your first track. I excuse me. This is super auto-tuned era, Lil Wayne. On the battlefield of love, don't it look like baby Cupid sending arrows from above? Don't it look like baby Cupid sending arrows from above? So before this song down, Jay Sean had many of his songs, but they were hit songs over there in the UK. His first hit in the States was this song. With this being his first single he released in the US, it was also on his first album he ever released in the US called All or Nothing. After All or Nothing in 2009, Jay Sean was supposed to release an album called Freeze Time. Thankfully, the Freeze Time album ended up getting scrapped, but somehow he was able to put out another album called Neon in summer 2013. I say that to say, regardless of how many albums Jay Sean puts out, whether it be in the UK or the US, don't be judging people for not knowing who he is. Cause I doubt any of y'all that's watching this damn video. When y'all are going on a date and getting to know somebody, y'all are not saying, so do you listen to somebody named Jay Sean? And y'all get up and leave if they say no. Now for Wiz Khalifa, I was actually going to put a different song in here, but I ended up switching it to No Sleep. So hilariously enough, 
No Sleep was a song I never heard of until I started working on this video. <laughs> the song I was about to put was a song from Early Early Wiz Khalifa. This song isn't uber popular like a Waka Waka, but this is the track that got Wiz his first wave of exposure. And that song was... The music video to this song is very fucking stupid, but I've never heard of Say Yeah until the end of 2023. And that was a song that Wiz dropped in 2008 as his fourth ever single. 2008 was even before Black and Yellow came out. Now there are a group of people that will tell you, I knew about Wiz before Black and Yellow, what? I've been listening to him since Say Yeah. For the people who say that, I am not on y'all's side. Now, I did know about Wiz Khalifa before Black and Yellow, but it wasn't because of this Say Yeah song. Black and Yellow came out in late 2010. I first found out about Wiz a year before that in late 2009. And the song that came out in late 2009 that introduced me to Wiz was this plane. Anything released before this plane? No, sir. If you would have mentioned a Wiz Khalifa to me, I would have asked, is he related to Mia Khalifa or something? But Mr. Mia Khalifa has never went on hiatus and he has been in the game since the late 2000s. He just released a project at the end of July 2024 called Wiz Owens. So dude is not slowing down. And over the past nearly 20 years now, he has made thousands of songs. One of those thousands of songs that I haven't listened to is this track, No Sleep. I am not BSing y'all. I was about to put Say Yeah in this entry, but when I was looking at his other radio singles, I went, oh no, nah. <laughs> let me slender this No Sleep song instead because this one is way more popular. This was the fifth and final single to his 2011 album, Rolling Papers. And to this day, No Sleep is one of only two songs that Wiz Khalifa has that have reached the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100, where it's just him on the track. He's had other top 10 hits such as Young, Wild and Free and See You Again, but those had features on them. For his solo tracks, even after nearly 20 years in the game, No Sleep and Black and Yellow are the only ones to ever reach that height. In regards to the five singles from this album anyway, I only recognize three of them. Of course, I recognize Black and Yellow. I know the song Roll Up, absolute classic. I know the song On My Level with Too Short. But these other two singles, no. <laughs> no Sleep, I've been talking about this whole time, so y'all know I ain't hip to that. But this other song, The Race, <laughs> no. I have no idea what this is. Shout out to Wiz Owens though, man. Whether I recognize his hit songs or not, he still be out here doing his thing. Being in the rap game for nearly 20 years is admirable on some level. Outro, outro, if, if, if.